just briefly for those interested in how I remade all the cams for this. Um, the original cams, these are the original ones, and you notice they've got this locating pin one side and there's a hole the other because they all sort of clip together. Did you see? You get that. Um, and originally when I 3D printed them, I printed them, <coughs> I don't know if I've got any examples here, yeah, I tried on the back, the trouble is, <laughs> because when it's been printed on a 3D bed and you've got pieces underneath, you have to have what's called a supporting structure and unfortunately that doesn't leave you the best surface underneath. And uh, <coughs> so what I decided to do, and uh, also I'd numbered them all, which was pretty good going. Uh, these were printed in PLA. And my intention was always to use harder plastic, but I initially printed these as, as kind of like a proof of concept, really. And there was another box of all sorts of plastic gears I've got in here. Uh, amazing what I use in different projects. And you never know when you may get something that's got something like that and then it fails. So that's why I keep a box of those amongst all my other components. So <coughs> what I did in the finish was, these are in PLA, um, on the final one I've used a plastic called PETG, P -T -G, which is arguably tougher than PLA. PLA is very easy to print because it doesn't require an excessively high temperature, about 180 something like that, and a bed temperature of about 50 or 60. Uh, but with PETG, you're printing at 240, much hotter, much hotter bed. The bed's about 70 uh, to allow it to stick, but it's a nicer plastic uh, and uh, not so prone to bits snapping off. And also, I added these little can you see those those rings around these posts because these are quite weak well they certainly were in PLA but I kept that on the ones I did for PET G uh, <coughs> so if we look at the original camshaft now like I say I was going to replicate the way they were put together but when you're it's all right if you put it through a, a plastic molding machine and you're using nylon something like that uh, it, it's quite robust you know uh, but I didn't want to have to remake all of these cams because these work fine. There's nothing wrong with them. Uh, but I did have to join the new ones on. So, like I say, I decided to have flat-bottomed ones. And on these Pet G ones, the difference I made was, because you see how much shorter the, the little ones are on each side, I made them all the same height. That's just a rough and ready one. So that the next cam sits on the back of that one. And that's how these three are sat together. Uh, if anybody wants the 3D STL files for these, um, I will put them out in the 3D universe. Or if you give me a nudge, I'll send it across to you if it's going to help you out. Uh, basically, I'll supply you with the STL file. Well, I'll supply you with the file with the full 10 teeth on. And then you can deduct teeth just before you print it. You just literally delete them. Uh, the ones you don't want. Uh, so the the best way I found of putting this together was to drill right through. Don't bother about those pegs. So you've got your five millimeter hole in the middle, and these whatever these are, I think they're three mil something like that. And uh, and I've got some three mil rod here, and I've literally threaded that all the way through because that's got a recess in it as well. I've got another one to do here, which has got see it's got a peg on it. I shall. Um, cut the peg off and just drill 3 mil hole into there and run another piece this side because my thinking is um, it strengthens the whole thing for one thing rather than relying on these plastic pegs uh, because when Gunter Wolf made these machines um, I think the history of it is they, they, they only had to last a certain amount of time I think it was German um, regulation a bit of a strange thing which is why they used the parts they did uh, <clears throat> so I thought, well, you know, who wants to go in and have to keep tearing this thing apart? So let's um, let's strengthen what we've already got. So the originals are all pegged together, um, but this whole section here will all have this metal support structure through it. I mean, I could just drill right through the whole thing, um, but I don't see the point in that. 
this this will do do fine. The other crucial thing to do when you're making up these cams is the and I've got a COVID test envelope of all things. Uh, but I used that. I looked at switches on the machine and made sure that they all line up, so that as I put each cam on, I know they're spaced correctly, and then it will go in the machine correctly. Very important you do that. And uh, to enable me to do that, I'd perhaps sand a little off that side or off the back and smooth it out. Hence why these look a little bit white because I've sanded them, and also I've put a little bit of um, PTFE silicon spray on it. Don't really want to be using um, engine oils on these types of plastics. I'm, I'm not sure what would happen over a period of time. They could get very brittle. Uh, the other reason you need the, this rod is this, which bolts on one end, has also got to locate squarely. That's all to do with the timing. There's also another one that goes on this end, uh, which is still sitting in the machine. It's part of the motor, so that everything lines up. Uh, so that's how I did it. In the end. They ended up flat, flat bottomed and uh, a lot better for it, I think. Uh, you do get a bit of flashing with 3D printing. You can see that stuff around there. Uh, it's just the nature of the beast, but it all cuts off easily with a craft knife. Uh, as you can see, I've done these. Got most rid of most of that. It's just odd little bits in there. Uh, but, yeah, just four more to slide on, which I've just printed. And then that's all ready to go back in the machine. So... Um, like I say, if you're going to 3D print them, don't bother trying to do all you know, replicate these because they did come out of a molding machine. Um, 3D print a little bit harder, and also, you know, you've got to put so much strengthening around these to stop them shearing off. So, much easier to extend them, as I say, make the little uh, collars around these to give it a bit more, you know, a uh, bit more of a fixing point. The middle one doesn't matter because it's quite large and uh, print them flat bottomed much much easier uh, everything lines up as far as the teeth how did I know the line up of the teeth well I did have the original wheels so let's turn this around and get it in focus um, well these ones are then probably not the best to look at because these are the ones that were chewed off uh, but if you look at this one See where that's, that's a single notch pair. That's where they start, which is there. So I made sure that was there. Looked at the ones that had a few teeth on to try and get the spacing right. Uh, getting the height of the teeth was also a bit uh, trial and error, but I did get that in the end. Um, but they, they will work absolutely fine, those. And uh, as I say, I've got, you know, the potential really for infinite payout. Uh, engineers watching this probably rubbing their hands <laughs> or scratching their heads one or the other anyway hopefully that explains how and why i did the cam the way i did it why i used the materials i used it uh, why i've decided to strengthen it with these rods that go through i think you know it'll last longer in the longer run and then all i've got to do is just put that in the machine and uh, fire it up and it should pay uh, as i hoped in terms of the payout amount amount this first tooth, which would have been tooth number six, yeah, uh, had ten teeth on it, which would have paid out one fennig, or if you were putting 20 peas in, two pound. Two pound seemed a bit high, so I changed that to one pound sixty by having eight notches, because it's eight times 20p, you see. Uh, the next highest has got four teeth, that will pay 80p, so that's not bad. So if you've got a triple one, you'll get £1.60. If you get a triple two, I think it is, you'll get 80p. And uh, there's three notches there. Uh, that's actually misplaced. It's got to go further down. Uh, that would be for a triple four, because actually it's easier to get a triple four. There's more fours uh, in the pay slots below. Hope that's helpful. And uh, we won't have to re revisit the cam ever again uh, hopefully but what i will do is i will print some spare cam wheels uh, i am going to keep some spares with this machine like a spare ball a few spare springs um, some extra cams in case you know anybody hits a problem in the future uh, we should keep it running pretty much forever yeah there you go right 
here we go camera installed this is cam in action and uh, down here we've got the teeth for the payouts they're the very last thing to come up right here we go this will be first ball Now, it, it would pay out if the lights were being lit up at the front because I'm not actually running the ball around, I'm automating this. This is second ball. The ball release. And third ball. Ball release again. And the last sequence is the payout. And you'll hear the tick, tick, tick of these last six. That's what should happen. And that's why I rebuilt the cam. As I say, two of these teeth, that one and that one, were completely gone. Um, the last one here doesn't have a leaf switch on it. But actually it doesn't need it because it's been doubled up by this one. Uh, although I have ordered another leaf switch from something else. I think it's a GPO one. And uh, I'll see if I can actually put that back in situ. I don't think it's really needed. But, you know, there you go. Anyway, one more time. First ball, ball's been released. You fire the ball, you make the score on the front, it drops back into the ball lock, which does this. Releases the second ball. Third ball. And then finally, the payout, if there is one. There you go. End of sequence. Interesting, isn't it, to watch? Right, next I'm going to set up the uh, coin payout. I've set number one, uh, I if you get three ones on the front, to pay out £1.60. So I'll have to put the game through a sequence of three balls and manually put it through so it hits one every time. So let's release the ball first. Right, I've got the ball. I'm going to manually drop it through number one and it's lit up one light and dropped into the ball lock. So, second sequence, ball's dropped, not mine. Uh, <laughs> through number one again, that's clocked up a second light into the ball drop. Third sequence. And again, we'll drop it through number one. Just about caught it. And drop it back into the ball lock. Now I've got three number ones all lit. So that should pay £1.60 on the last sequence. So let's see. Could be noisy if it all works. Yep, exactly right. I don't know if you can see, see that. £1.60 in there. Yeah. So all the payouts are working now. So it looks like the machine's all operating as it should. So um, I will go around, give all the contacts a bit of a clean. And then uh, we'll start putting the coin mechanism in, which will be rather nice. If you notice, when the cam goes, when it starts up, well as dropping the ball do you see that arm came out the reason it does that is because when you put 20p in the coin mechanism which sits here by the way 20p is sitting in the coin mechanism and the only thing that makes it drop is this arm coming across and pushing a lever on the coin mechanism and then it either drops it in there which is the payout chute or it goes down here and into a coin catcher on the very back of the machine uh, which I shall put on as the last job um, but otherwise everything else seems to work uh, let me show you something else as well these are the stepper motors if I and it'll light up a few lights it makes these cams advance on these stepper motors so they're all showing numbers at the moment when you start a new game it will reset them let's go right around to the end There we go. That's all the numbers reset back to zero again. So there's no lights on the display other than the ones each side which light up the instructions. So 
yes, everything works. Right, let's have a recap of, of uh, what I've done today. Um, an awful lot, and a lot of it has been really a learning experience for me, and hopefully for anybody else that works on a bingo let, they'll pick up some bits and pieces from me. I'll try and include as much as I can in these series of videos. So if you do come into a bingo let, or you've got one and it isn't working, and you can't work out why, uh, you may do by watching all my videos. Uh, first thing I did was repair a broken wire on the windings luckily it was on the outside been nibbled at by a mouse and I wrote down how many turns 6100 at 0.14 gauge wire if anybody else ever had to rewind that very fortunate the motor was in very good working order the same could not be said of the cam as you know that's gone over a few episodes trying to sort that out and looking at the original Gunter Wolf wiring diagram, which does tell you how many teeth are on it. I was a bit late in spotting that. Uh, <clears throat> so I've three, 3D three printed all of them. Uh, they are now in PET-G plastic filament, which is a bit tougher than um, the ordinary PLA stuff, I hope so. Uh, but the alternative was I could have gone with carbon impregnated nylon. Uh, but a lot of people said, no, Pet G will be fine. Because it's only just riding on it, really. And uh, if I did have problems, I could reprint them all. Because I've still got the models, obviously, that now I've created them. Um, so I've done that, cleaned all the contacts, make sure they they uh, meet correctly and make a circuit. Same with all these stepper motors, made sure they do as well. Every single number lights up on the front as it should. So obviously these are working. I disconnected the 12 volt AC supply for the bulbs and fitted this recycled LED driver uh, which was being thrown out at work um, because they had new signage and stuff like that so they had different systems different to drive it and uh, lucky enough this one still worked and gave 12 volts so I managed to reuse that it, okay it occupies a bit in the machine and it may be overkill uh, but at the moment it's powering the bulbs fine uh, I repaired that electromagnet and uh, somebody pointed out that that doesn't sit right at the top of the slot but actually I've allowed for that so even if it does slip to the top it'll still pull down correctly I made a new coin tube because the old one had been butchered uh, presumably to run thrupney bits in the past and I found that Wick's curtain pole which was just the right diameter for that and lucky enough in chrome that was okay uh, re-greased all the coin mechanism because that was very stiff um, trying to get my automatic lights to come on again uh, what else did I do uh, yeah I pulled out the original transformer and that seems fine uh, I'm at the moment still running on the original selenium rectifier for um, most of the board but I will at some time change that to a more modern version because they do go eventually they stink when they do uh, so that was pretty much it on the back I've still got to put in this I have got this lucky it came with it this is the coin tube that drops it into that slot and through the payout out the front uh, so if you're wondering how the money gets out of the front, that's how. I've taken the handle off temporarily because it was getting in the way of what I was doing today. Uh, but I can put all that back. So that is everything that I've done on the back. Um, quite comprehensive. Uh, and if we go and look at the front, I've still got these temporary bits of paper over the light boxes. Uh, it was just really so I could check parts, but I don't need to look at those now. I could actually remove them. Um, Went through quite a few LED bulbs until I found the ones that I liked. These are good. Uh, I had all of these pins out from the back and re-sleeved them in polyurethane. They give a nice bounce actually. Um, I've written on here what the numbers were because I couldn't tell without the artwork. Uh, but looking at other bingo lets I soon worked out what they are. They actually disappear once the artwork's on it. It's just a reference while I'm working on it. Um, New springs here, another bulb there. Um, check the contacts on the ball, ball lock, they were fine. I've cleaned and polished all the track. Um, I've been very careful, I don't, I don't want to take any of the, the finish off it. 
replace most of the washers behind these nuts and these pins because they've got a bit rusty um, and that's about it now uh, I've just got to concentrate on doing the artwork for the front door and this is then ready to hang up on a wall as you know I've bought a vinyl cutter uh, I don't know how long it's going to take us to sort of get to grips with that um, but I think initially we'll, we'll try and follow most of the artwork for the Bingale, give it a sort of period feel to it um, but it'll be much brighter than the originals most of the original machines with the, with the original glass on all the paint is flaking off the back that's unfortunately what happens with screen printed glass so I think vinyl is probably the way to do it again I will keep the files for the artwork in with the machine so if anybody has to replace that in the future they've got it along with various other spares I've repainted these and the handle they come out really well actually I'm doing it gold I did it a bronze color I'm glad I did because it looks a bit more antiquated I think if I'd gone for bright gold um, out of the sort of aerosol cans you can get now it would have been a bit a bit garish you know what I mean so uh, considering the state of this and uh, here's a picture of it as on the day I picked it up it was a bit of a sad state um, we've we've come on a long way I think and uh, for Tim uh, who I bought it from I have to say Tim you really would have had your work cut out for you with this and uh, you know he, he got ideas for the artwork but this machine needed a lot of work to get it running again but we are there so uh, I'll see you in the next episode uh, when we concentrate exclusively on new glass and the artwork for it that could be a few weeks uh, but in the meantime there'll be some other Ralph's house videos I'm sure and uh, you know you can follow along can't you thanks for watching oh and don't forget to subscribe